All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into this. So let's go ahead and create our JSON, our JSON array request. I'm gonna say JSON array request and make sure that you have volley here. If you don't see this, that means you didn't actually add our volley. So go back to the previous videos and where I show you how to add volley library into our projects. So we have that. I'm gonna call this JSON array request. Let's get new. request but now here I'm gonna go ahead and add a method I'm gonna say request word volley and with that method we want to get right that's the request type and the next thing we're gonna pass our URL where we are getting this from and then I'm gonna pass a new object here new response as such right say enter and there we go so to finalize our our statement here I'm gonna say comma say new error response error say enter and then of course finally I go semicolon so that means now this response here if all goes well should have this response which is all of our quotes very nice in order for this to work of course we need to go down here at the end we're gonna say app controller as you can see here and then I'm gonna say dot get instance there we go and I'm gonna say add to request or add to request queue and I'm gonna pass our JSON array request okay that's very simple so now I only have one instance that I can always use okay so it's not like we're creating the same object over and over again so if he if I had to go and create another class that would fetch some other data I would do the same thing but I will still be getting just one instance of our app controller class which has all of the methods we need to actually fetch the data using volley okay very nice so now that we know we have our response here our JSON response we also know that we need is the actual objects which are these inside right this is gonna be object 0 1 and so forth that also means now we have to probe in into this JSON array into and then create a JSON object. So we can easily do that. First of all, we're gonna go inside of our own response here because this is where we get the response. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say for. I'm gonna say int so equal int i zero i is less than response dot length i plus plus as such so I'm gonna iterate iterate through our array list or our array JSON array that is and then as I do that I'm gonna create the actual JSON objects right because that's what I need to create an actual uh, to get the quote and the author all right so I'm gonna call this quote object such is equal to new now I'm going to say is equal to response because that's what we know it has all that information dot get JSON and I'm going to pass the I as such now of course I'm going to have some issues here because remember we are tapping into a remote server which means things could go wrong so we need to actually surround it with try and catch okay now that I have my quote of object here that means now I have each one of these objects right so this this and the, and so forth that means I can do things with them right now okay so I can actually create a quote say quote is equal to new quote okay that's the quote class object okay and I can then start constructing I say quote that set quote look at that I can say quote object because I know it has all the information I need I say get string and I'm gonna say quote Okay, I'm getting that again from here. So I'm saying now I'm creating this object here and I'm passing in this quote which will return the actual quote. So I can do the same with the name which is the author. Ah, okay, so I can go ahead and say again quote that set author is equal to quote object, get string, and its name that's the field name and once I have all of that in fact at the top here once I have all of that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it all to my quote array list and add I'm gonna add 
add the quote because now this quote will have an actual name or an actual author and the actual quote. To make sure that this actually works, I'm gonna go ahead and say log and pass in here, say stuff. Okay, this is just for us to be able to see. I'm gonna pass just, let's pass our response uh, that get, let's just pass our quote object as such. I'm gonna say get string, just the name. Okay, just the names of, of all of the people who wrote the quotes. Now, how do we then call, let's go ahead into our main, because that's where everything starts. Inside here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, it's equal to new data or quote data dot get quotes as such. So what I'm gonna do, what this is gonna do is, it's going to go ahead and call our get quotes, which will go ahead and do its job. And hopefully we're gonna say in our log, just all of the names. Okay, let's save this and give it a quick run. And I think it's not gonna work. Or is it? Go to message, let's go to run. Ah, there we go. I knew it wasn't gonna work because we actually have to, <laughs> remember we are tapping to the internet so we have to get the permission or add the permission. All right, there we go. Let's go to our manifest file. Say uses permission, internet as such, and voila. Now if you save and give it a run, we should actually see something happened here. Well, let's go to log cat at the bottom and look at that. Now we have everything, all of those names. Make this bigger, okay? stuff you notice we put stuff there and look at that very nice so now we know at least we are able to fetch that data from our json api okay so we have proven ourselves that this works which is always the biggest battle now that we know that we have the data that we need that's all good now let's go ahead back let's go ahead and set up our view pager um, and create the fragment which we will then put inside of our view pager so that we can start sliding left and right with data. Okay. So let's go to our Java here, our packet. I'm gonna say right click, say new. I'm gonna say I want a fragment. Let's go find the blank fragment. Let's get rid of all of these. We don't need them. This is going to be, I'm gonna call this quote fragment. I'm gonna say finish, there we go. Now we have our quote fragment. And remember again, when we deal with fragments, we wanna make sure that we're actually getting the v4. Support v4 app fragment as such. Okay, that's very important because we wanna be able to support previous versions of Android. Very nice, so there we go. So now we have our fragment here and we have our own create view, which is where the view is created. Now you also notice if we go to our layout, you notice we have our quotes fragment here. In fact, let's go ahead and change this to relative layout and it's okay, now we can just leave as it is. Okay, let's go back to our quote fragments here. So like I said, we need inside of our own create view, this is where our view is inflated. As you can see here, we have a fragment quote, which is this XML here. And now what we need to do is actually change a few things. I'm gonna actually create a view, okay? I'm gonna call this fragment um, quote view. And I'm gonna use our inflator object. Later. In fact, I already have this, right? I'm gonna just copy this, put it there, and then I'm gonna return a quote view, okay? So there we go. Now, we know now that this quote view here knows everything about this quote XML. In fact, if we put anything else here other than this text view, we can infer it from here, okay? And we'll do that shortly. But now the other thing we need to do is we need to create the actual adapter, which will adapt this fragment here with our fragment quote XML, as well as adding the data that we need from our JSON API. 
which means we have to create our view pager adapter. So if we go to inside of our data here, I'm going to right click Java class, I'm going to call this quote, view pager adapter. Okay, and I want this to extend fragment view pager support as such. Say enter. And there we go. Okay, and of course, we have an issue here, we have to implement certain methods because we're implementing there. I'm going to make sure all of them are checked, say okay, and we still have another issue, which means we have to create a constructor with the same name, say create, there we go. Now life is good. Now, the idea here is that each time we get a new quote, we're going to create a new fragment. Now, now, if we wanted to do this manually, what we would have done is we would have created as many, let's say 100 fragments as we did here, right? Great fragment quote one, fragment quote two, and so forth, as you can see. But you notice that's not really a good strategy because we are trying to make everything dynamically created, right? We're getting all of the quotes from our API and we want to create each view, or each fragment quote, or each card dynamically. That way, or if our API is sending us 300 quotes, then we will create 300 fragments. Or at least we will make sure that each time that's created, it's all dynamically and we don't have to do any work. So that means with that, I'm going to create an actual list that will hold fragments. So what this means is that I'm going to create a list of fragments, I'm going to say private list, I'm going to type fragment. Okay, make sure it's fragment v4. I'm gonna import that. There we go, fragment v4. And I'm gonna call these fragments. Okay. And inside of this, inside of our constructor here, I'm gonna go ahead and instantiate it. So I'm gonna say this that fragments. And of course, here yeah, I need to pass a list of fragments to call this fragments. So these are fragments is equal to fragments. This is just set up. So when we create our quote view pager instantiated, we have to pass of course, the fragment manager type and of course, the fragments that we will then populate into our view pager. Okay, making sense. All right. So the next thing we're going to do uh, inside of our fragment get item here, instead of null, we're just going to say this dot fragments dot get and I'm going to pass position. Okay, because remember, fragments here is a type of list. And for get count, you guessed it, I'm going to say this again dot fragments size. And that's it for our pager adapter. The majority of the work is going to be somewhere else. All right, and that's it for our pager adapter. This may not seem very encouraging because we are diving into the code side of things, right? We're doing the logic, we're creating the logic that we'll then use to put all of these, the views and the view pager, everything together, which we will do in the next videos. I'll see you next.